would never know it, but I am standing in the urban core of Kansas City, Missouri, and today you are going to meet Brooke and Dan, two people who are setting the standard for what it means to run an urban farm. I've been living in San Francisco and traveling all over the world and coming into my own, trying to figure out the meaning of life, I tell people. In order to sustain my travels, I worked on organic farms in exchange for room and board. And that kind of, um, for the first time in my life, grounded me, gave me something to focus on, gave me a passion that I felt was actually worthwhile. About 10 years ago, I moved back to Kansas City, started a small farm. I wanted to feed myself and sell the excess. Two years into that, my now husband Dan joined me and we sort of tripled our production and we were making a living off it. You know, this tiny little acre area was making about $30,000 a year in vegetables, so it was lucrative. Unfortunately, not all our neighbors were as excited about it as we were. Basically, our neighbors decided that the presence of a farm or a large garden would bring down their property values and they approached the city and they told us that if their property values plummeted it would allow poor black families to move into their neighborhood and that our farm needed to be abolished and it got extremely ugly uh, turned into a huge sort of blowout between community gardeners and food activists environmentalists like us versus um, the bourgeois <laughs> you know i don't know how else to put it it you know, became about social justice, it became about personal empowerment. You know, the racism piece and the discrimination was, was just unthinkable. So we fought back and long story short, we were forced to move on from that farming situation. We were planning on leaving Kansas City, but lo and behold, we found this 13 and a half acre piece of blighted, you know, underutilized land and we fought the city to purchase it which is its own very, very long story. The city spent $20,000 a year to keep this property mowed for over 20 years. That's a lot of money. When we purchased the land, the first year we were on it, we grew $40,000 worth of food. So it just goes to show, when I say you know land is wasted or underutilized, it, it truly is. And not only is it wasted, it's a strain on the people living in the city. In six years that we've been here, we've grown about close to $400,000 worth of food on this property without water or electricity. When we purchased the land, it was completely raw. We had to put in fencing. We started a citywide composting program. We spent four years building an off-grid water system. The farm is essentially uh, self-sustaining. So, I mean, it's it's pretty wild and pretty awesome. Um, and and basically unheard of in any city across America. So this was our spring vegetable field and a lot of these beds have been turned over and we're planting fall stuff in here. So there's sweet potatoes there, there's salad turnips, these are black Spanish radishes under here, watermelon radishes under the row cover and more varieties of turnips. Finally, there are leeks peeking out of the weeds there. <laughs> so, I mean, things are growing everywhere on this farm. Yeah. I mean, no matter where you step, there is something that's alive. Right. It's just sort of an edible oasis, and there's just so many layers of life everywhere. How did you learn it, this? It, we sort of taught ourselves, and yeah, it did take years to develop our systems and perfect them and every day we're still developing perfecting and you're financially sustainable i mean yeah. you're making a profit amazingly so every single penny we make goes back into the farm every little piece of infrastructure you see on the farm it was all paid for with beets and turnips grown on this land <laughs> process. It's been a long process. <laughs> um, I, I try not to put a lot of meaning on, onto it as far as what it means, you know, sort of socially or, or in, a, in this larger context. I, I try to focus on what it means for us, uh, what it means for our livelihood and our life. 
this is where our family is, this is our land, this is something that we take care of all aspects of it. So we have a passive solar earth firmed home. I tell people it's kind of like a modern day hobbit house. That's the hobbit house. It is so cute. Stan's masterpiece. It's built with all natural materials as much as the city would let us. So it's almost 100% non-toxic. Wow, this is beautiful. It's covered oh. with earth and it's incredibly oh. insulative. So we have no heating or cooling. We have a wood burning cook stove, composting toilet, and uh, yeah, it's like nothing you would see anywhere. <laughs> so it's unfinished, but it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, and the view, I mean, you can't. No, know. it's gorgeous. We're not wealthy people, but whenever I see that view, I feel wealthy. You've built that, you didn't have yes. to buy it. Yes, I agree. <laughs> We're into living simply, um, giving back more than we take. And that fuels us, that gives us purpose. And I know that's not how everyone works, but that's how we work. That's what makes us happy. I'm inspired by this, what you've built here and the amount of effort that you've put in to reclaim the land, to give back to the community. I think what you've done is incredibly special. Thank you. You should be very, very proud Thank of it. Thank you so much.